Jordy Ball, Oklahoma softball pitcher. Welcome to Sports Spectrum. How are you? Thank you. I'm good. How are you? I'm great. It's good to talk to you. It's good to be here in Norman. Um, I want to start our conversation with a moment. And it was after your squad had clinched the championship last year, um, you were on the field, all your teammates are on the field, and suddenly it's not We Are the Champions that's playing, it's a song by Casting Crowns called Nobody But Jesus. Mm -hmm. And you're not just celebrating, you are singing the songs, I mean, you guys are all into it. I want you to take me back to that moment and describe that moment where you're full of jubilee having just won a championship, but yet that song pops on and you guys are all giving glory to God. Right. Honestly, that was probably one of the more fulfilling moments than winning the championship is just taking the platform that the Lord provided with us and then giving it all back to him in that moment. And that song has been around our team before I even got there my freshman year. Hmm. And I just love that song. And I love it when we played in the bus and everything on the way to games and after games, because um, for being the successful team that we are, and we have players that have a lot of spotlight and our team in general gets a lot of spotlight. A lot of us don't love the spotlight personally, including myself, but being able that just through that song and what it talks about, like we're just a nobody trying to tell everybody about him. So, yeah. um, it's just super powerful. And in that moment, just to have that be the center of attention was amazing. Did you recognize when you chose though, Oklahoma? and they're this power program who's winning national championships, back-to-back -back national championships as we're talking. Did you know, though, that that's going to be a platform for Jardy Ball to be able to talk about Christ? Did you mm -hmm. recognize that as you were making your decision? Um, as I was making my decision, it was something that I had thought about, but I think not, not fully understanding it until I got here and seeing upperclassmen and women like Grace Lyons who have taken it to the absolute next level, who have only inspired girls in our team to do that. Um, I understood it, but not fully until I got here. Take me to when you got here. Like, what was it when you, when you came here and you're a freshman, but you were a highly touted freshman and you're playing right away, you're contributing right away. So it's not like you were sitting on the bench learning, right. you know, that first year, like a lot of freshmen do, but you come here what was it about this culture that was like, oh, this is different than what I thought it was going to be? I probably would just say how much it's not about the softball amongst all the girls on our team. Yeah. Like people would think the exact opposite, being a successful team like we are. Um, they would think that it's like live, breathe, die softball for us. But yes, while we put in the work and we put in the hours to be um, successful here at the field like that's not the number one priority in a lot of our lives and I think that really shines through especially in big moments when you would think the pressure's on us a lot of us tell each other like hey the end's already written so we just have to go out and ball and what happens happens and we just can be able to accept whatever happens all right so another moment after you guys win it all and you're saying singing nobody but Jesus you are on the platform uh, talking to the press mm -hmm. and we share this on our social media pages because we can, because you talked about Christ, <laughs> whereas other platforms may not. But you were sharing the story about Peter and get, get out of the boat. Mm -hmm. And I just thought there was a moment where you're talking about the story, and it's a couple minutes that you're sharing about what that means. You finish sharing it, and you look over at your teammate, and you give a little fist bump. <laughs> and I thought that, to me, just a little fist bump was awesome because that told me that you were ready for that moment. Mm -hmm. Not the moment of winning a title, but the moment of somebody asking you what it means to get out of the boat. And you were like, all right, here's our chance to talk about Christ. Mm -hmm. Take me to that moment and just being prepared. Peter actually talks about that in First Peter, to be prepared to give a reason for the hope that's within you. How about you? Um, I just think going into the postseason, at that time I was battling an injury with my arm and I didn't know whether I was going to get to be out on the field or not. And I had just told myself and prepped myself that whether I get out on that field or not, I know a lot of people are going to have a lot of questions about how the end of the season went and I want to be re ready to answer it and give God the glory no matter what happens. So I think just in that moment for that the question to be um, the question that I was asked and being able to just shine the light on him and give the glory to him in that moment and make him the center of attention was probably just one of the most fulfilling things. Nobody wants to go through injuries, but you can learn a lot when you're injured. Yeah. What did you learn? Kind of like I just said earlier, like be content whether I have everything or whether I have nothing, because even when you feel like you have nothing, you have all you need, and that is in him. And so that was a big thing I learned in that time, just be content whatever the circumstances. And um, it's when I feel the weakest where I lean on him and I become the strongest. So um, that was a really kind of changing point for me. Tell me about the first time you met Coach Gasso. Um, I remember first phone call, actually. 
Um, but first time I met her in person. Um, she well, let's start with the phone call. The phone Tell call? me about the phone call first, <laughs> and then we'll talk about the in-person. I remember one of the first things she said was, so a few things I know about you, Jordy, is that you love America, you love God, and you love your family. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much right. So, <laughs> so was that a selling point even just initially? <laughs> I just thought it was funny. It was definitely a different approach. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to do it, though. Now, what about meeting her in person and just getting that? Because you chose this school. She mm-hmm. recruits you, but you had a chance. You had a choice to go anywhere. You chose here. Yeah, um, really when I just came down on my visit, everything felt so authentic. Um, A lot of the times in the recruiting process, it's like you don't know what's the red carpet being rolled out and what is like just like real and genuine. Um, But really just, I was around the team a lot, so much time around the girls and just feeling the genuine like love they have for each other was like a family. And just knowing I was gonna be going from home, I wanted a family away from home and that was in them. So um, just feeling that, Obviously, knowing that they're successful, they work hard, um, they take it seriously. Uh, those are all just really the big selling points. How do you stay humble when you got a lot of people patting on, patting you on the back and lifting <laughs> up the name of Jordy Ball, and you point back to Christ, which is great. But how do you stay humble and not get caught up in all the attention? I mean, you were a two-time high school player of the year, pitcher of the year. How do you not get caught up in all that from high school coming into college and had a great freshman year, winning a championship? How do you stay humble and not get caught up in all that? Um, without the support of so many people in my life, that would not have happened. So it's you can't point the finger or point the thumb at yourself and be like, I did that because I didn't do that. A village of people who have supported me since day one made that possible. Mm, that's really so. good. How uh, or Take me to the moment when you began your relationship with Christ. Talk us through, walk us through um, the journey of your faith in the Lord. Yeah, I would say in high school, um, I really struggled with being able to see myself as a person outside of just an athlete. And then I was in my sophomore year and I realized, okay, well then what happens when I'm done playing softball? Like I have to be here for a greater purpose than that. Um, I dove into the FCA at my high school, got got connected there. Um, The leader of that FCA was a great man and he really kind of just held my hand in faith um, from Mm. the very beginning of that moment. And I'd always grown up going to church and everything, but I never understood the personal relationship. And so that's when I started to seek that personal relationship with Christ. And how did that grow when you got here? I mean, you talked about the players and the program, but for you personally, your relationship with Christ That first year is hard. I have a daughter right now who's Mm -hmm. a freshman in college, so I know that that first year can be so hard Mm -hmm. at such a young age. What was that freshman year like for you as a person, as a a woman growing in her faith? Right. So as supportive as this team is and everything, when you go off to college for the first time in your life, you're kind of on your own and you have the choices to put time into certain things. You don't have mom and dad on your back saying, make sure you get this done, make sure you get that done. You personally have to take the initiative to put time apart for God. And um, so kind of just making it my own independent choice is something that I felt like when I came down to school because it would have been easy to just sit back and not get out of bed on Sunday morning and go to church. But continuing to constantly pursue was a big thing. Um, And I just think another thing that is super important when you come down to school is keeping your prayer game strong because that is your time to be with the Lord. That is his tool he's given us to deal with the challenges of life and you're off on your own, it gets hard. Um, I'm not saying that it's been an easy ride since I've um, sought out a personal relationship with Christ, but prayer is that tool he gives us for when we're going through it. And so um, it's easy to get lazy with it too and sit back and forget to pray when you get busy, but that's when you need to the most. So, How do you stay dominant on the mound, competitive, have a fiery spirit, and still humble? How do you mix those two? We talk to a lot of athletes on sports spectrum, NFL players, NBA players, the highest level coaches. And I'm always fascinated with this humble, meek spirit as a follower of Christ that we, you know, that he calls us to have, Mm -hmm. but yet a fiery spirit, a competitive spirit that wants to go out and dominate when you're on the field. How do you kind of marry those two together? Um, Well, I remember one conversation is that exact same point came up in high school at FCA group and um, the leader of our FCA group was like well think about it if Jesus was down here playing a sport giving the glory to God how do you think he would be going at it (laughs) he would dominate (laughs) exactly he would be fiery he would be giving it everything he had he wouldn't be um, just putting in half the effort he would be doing every little thing so Mm. is there a bible verse that you stick to 
that's one like that you kind of live by like a life verse um colossians 3 23 work willingly and whatever you do as though you're working for the lord rather than people and then i also love the verse proverbs 28 1 the wicked flee though no one pursues but the righteous are as bold as a lion mm. and that's what this team reflects right yes absolutely tell me about your excitement for this coming season 23 <laughs> Um, I just love that our team, you know, we're not focused on going three times in a row. Like, that's nothing we really talk about. We just come in every day, we give it everything we have, and we roll with that. Um, we just know that we've put the work in, so whatever we put out there is going to be the best that we can put out there, and we just play free in that way. What are you most thankful for in your life right now? Oh, probably just my family. Mm. Um, yep, I'm a homebody, so I get homesick quite a bit, but my family is always in my corner. They're always a phone call away, and every second I can get home and be with them, I absolutely love it and soak it all up. So just feeling their support, even though I'm seven hours away, and how it's been constant is just something I'm super thankful for. Did you have them here for the uh, for the championship games? Um, my mom and dad and brother were able to make it for the championship series. I love that you have such a close-knit with your family. <laughs> uh, that's important, and I think a lot of people forget that you're – you're a college student, you play sports, and you're out there on a big platform, but you're still a college student trying to just grow and live your life and having your family there, that's really cool. How influential were they as, as parents helping you, not just develop as a person or as a softball player, but as a, as a woman of faith too? Uh, my mother is one of the strongest women of faith I know, or women of faith I know. But just honestly looking up to her my entire life, she is just the mediator in our family. <laughs> and that's a characteristic I want to have as well. Mm -hmm. So just seeing how she's been strong in moments where maybe our family's been going through it, um, she's just someone I really look up to in that way. One more for me. What's your why when you go out there on the mound? What's your why? What's your purpose? My why is that I know a lot of little girls are watching um, and I want them to know that everything that our team does out there is not for ourselves, but it's for something so much greater. Jordy Ball, thank you. <laughs>